Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel CR Daredevil and it is time for yet another pay-per-view to happen in the WCW What If series. It is time for World War 3 1996. We're going to have to see who gets uh who gets entered into the tag team qualifier matches who then moves on to the battle royal where the winner gets a shot at the WCW World's Heavyweight Championship anytime in the next 12 months. And of course, speaking of the WCW World's Heavyweight Championship, the only championship on the line here tonight, the WCW World's Heavyweight Championship on the line, as Randy Savage defends against Eddie Guerrero. That should be a great match as well. Uh, we do have breaking news, though. Um, I didn't do a segment for it because I kind of forgot to, but... We do have breaking news. Uh, it turns out that the winner of last year's World War III, Bam Bam Bigelow, actually got injured uh, at a house show. And uh, he's out for a while. So he's not going to be in tonight's thing, which is huge. That means that no matter what, we are for sure going to have a brand new winner of World War III. Now, granted, this is only the second ever World War III, but... It still means that we're going to have a first ever winner of it tonight as the man who won it last year is out for an undetermined amount of time. Um, obviously, I know how long it is, but I'm not revealing how long it is. So there you go. That's huge breaking news to happen. Um, uh, trust me, I was not happy when it happened. <laughs> I was Not that I had him plan to win, but because I, I didn't plan anything with tonight. Um, it was all randomized, but the, uh, you know, the idea of it, uh, um, the idea of that playing out like that kind of really sucks. So, but you know, that, that happens in the wrestling world that happens. Nevertheless, let's dive in to the action here tonight. Remember at world war three, every decision other than the world title match it itself has, is uh, randomized, so I do not, like, nobody knows ahead of time who's actually getting into the lottery, or who's, well, not who's getting into the lottery, because everybody's entered in the lottery. Nobody knows ahead of time who's actually competing tonight, and nobody knows ahead of time who their tag partner's going to be, who they're going to be going up against opponent-wise. It's all due to the randomizer, so we'll have to see how that plays out. But we do open up World War Three with a pre-taped double interview featuring the competitors from tonight's World's Heavyweight Championship matchup, Randy Savage and Eddie Guerrero, as they talk about their respect for each other and doing what they have to do in order to win the match tonight. Guerrero talks about the opportunity, about how he's been looking forward for this to something like this all his life. And Savage says, says that he knows that Guerrero will get plenty more opportunities in the future, but tonight is not his night. So some strong words there from Savage. Showing respect for each other, but at the same time, wanting to make sure that the each other understands that they're going to do whatever it takes to make sure they get the victory tonight. That's going to be a big-time matchup. I'm hoping for a really great rating from it, but it's going to be a big-time matchup for sure. In front of 50,000 people in the Carrier Dome, uh, I did not do segments to do any sort of drawings or anything like that, so we're going to find this out as we go. But starting things off in our opening contest of the World War Three. We have Sean Morley and Road Warrior Animal defeating Brett Smith of the Outlaws and Robert Gibson of the Rock and Roll Express in 7-Eleven. When Road Warrior Animal pinned Brett Smith, Morley was the weak link. Struggling to keep up with everybody's entering performances. So Road Warrior Animal and Sean Morley are the first two participants to enter the Battle Royal. That's huge for someone like Morley because this, I mean, he just debuted within, in WCW within the last like 30 days, so... That's huge for somebody like him to show up here in World War Three, and uh, not only be, you know, not only be actually brought into it, um, not actually, you know, not only to be picked in the lottery, but then to actually get a victory. So he's in the battle royal at the end of the night. So the way this is going to work is that there's ten tag team matches, which means that there are forty people who were picked from the lottery, uh, out of a possible. 50, I think there were a couple of people I excluded for, for obvious reasons. Um, so it's really not like it's a big deal. It, like it's, it's harder to be not picked, I guess. 
but uh you know but still you never know who you're gonna end up pairing up with and all that stuff so nevertheless sean morley and road warrior animal are first two participants in the battle royal later on tonight and of course with the lottery as well this actually benefits people like sean morley and road warrior animal because now they have quite like that now they can rest for most of the night before you know having to immediately jump back into action so they can recover they can catch their breath they can you know do what they need to do to prepare themselves for the the battle royal tonight versus somebody who's in you know the last couple matches the last couple qualifying matches that is going to have to kind of you know pick up and and get right into it i mean the world title match is happening right before the battle royal so they'll have a little bit of time but it's still you know a big difference between waiting a couple hours before that battle royal and waiting a matter of minutes so nevertheless morley and road warrior animal advancing on in the first qualifier in our second qualifier of the evening christopher daniels and steve austin defeat paul levesque of the new world order and kaz hayashi in 820, when Steve Austin pinned Kaz Hayashi with a Fez press, Steve Austin head and shoulders above everyone else. Um, I thought that this was kind of interesting that it ended up putting Paul Levesque and Steve Austin against each other in this match. I thought that was kind of an interesting little uh, turn of events there. Um, like I said, completely randomized. So, uh, you know, that part was really interesting. You're also going to notice that a lot of these matches, a lot of the qualifier matches are really short because, one, these guys also have to work a battle, you know, the winners have to work a battle royal later in the night. And two, I didn't want to, like, I already have enough time on this card as it is. I didn't want to have, like, 15-minute matches on there and just end up eating up, like, five hours worth of stuff on here. So all the qualifiers are are right around, like, the seven, eight, uh, seven to nine-minute mark or so, kind of right around that area. <laughs> Nevertheless, Steve Austin and Christopher Daniels moving on to the battle royal at the end of the night. This would be... Uh, obviously it'd be huge for somebody like Christopher Daniels to win, but it would be kind of big for Steve Austin to win. You know, he's, he, uh, he's been dealing with Bret Hart and then, and the new world order all year so far. And, uh, he's had the, the title shot. He had that one title shot over, but he hasn't really been in the picture that much since. So it'd be kind of big for him to end up getting a shot at the title and taking on either Eddie Guerrero or, or Randy Savage, depending on how tonight's result ends up. 65 rating for the match though. Eh, uh, has or uh, Hayashi and Daniels brought it down, but that's all right. Honestly, a lot of the qualifier matches are probably going to bring down um, the show overall. But we're going to have a couple. You know, we'll have like the world title match, and there might be one or one uh, other match that kind of really brings it up. So we'll see how that plays out. Our third qualifier for the evening features Brad Armstrong of the Armstrong family, obviously, and Booker T of Harlem Heat defeating. The former television champion Alex Wright and the current United States champion Dustin Rhodes in 754. When Booker T pinned Alex Wright with a harm hangover, uh, Paul Levesque actually came out and distracted Dustin Rhodes during the matchup, which kind of led to his team having a bit of an upset, or not upset, but a bit of a struggle with this one. And uh, Booker T and Brad Armstrong were able to get the victory. Um, 74 rating for the match, so, you know, pretty decent there. Uh, lost heat with the U.S. title storyline, but that's kind of to be expected. Brad Armstrong and Medusa have great chemistry, which is good, and Alex Ray and Cutie Suzuki have great chemistry, which is good. So there's that. But Brad Armstrong and Booker T moving on to the Battle Royal at the end of the night. Um, good for both men. Kind of interesting to see that uh, the United States champion doesn't move on to the Battle Royal at the end of the night. But to be fair, you know, he, he has a justifiable reason. He was distracted by Paul Levesque. He was, you know, Levesque cost him the match, so... Levesque has, seems like it's been it's become kind of clear that he's targeting uh, Dustin Rhodes in the United States Championship. He has until the you know he has about another month to challenge for that title, um, according to the contract, or else he loses that for that uh, guaranteed title opportunity. So we'll have to see if he uses it between now and then. After that, we take a quick break from the qualifiers because we go backstage to a promo with the Giant. Where he talked about he's talking about doing what he promised he'd do to Meng, but he is expressing disappointment in not being drawn for tonight's World War Three. Apparently, the participant apparently he was informed but that he has not been drawn. Um, I don't know how it's supposed to be happening live, but whatever. He apparently was informed. 
Uh, so he promises to get a world title shot once, one way or another. 97 rating for the segment. Very strong stuff from the Giant here. Um, you know, he talked about, he he promised what he'd do to make. He promised he'd put him through a table and then put him through a table. So we'll have to see what uh, what the Giant means by getting a world title shot. Not sure what he's going to do with that, but we also don't know if it's uh, if things are done between him and Bane. We'll have to see how that plays out in the near future. We then move on to our next qualifier matchup. And about to head decent wrestling, but not much heat. The former United States champion, Barry Windham, and the other half of the Outlaws, William Wesson, defeat Takamichinoku and Scott Armstrong in 720 when Windham pinned Takamichinoku with a flying lariat. Wyndham carried the match in terms of in-ring performance, kind of expected, obviously. 69 rating, though. Nice. Um, but yeah, decent qualifier there. So now the former United States champion is in the main event, uh, Battle Royal, as is uh, William Wesson from the Outlaws. So kind of interesting to see how that's going to play out with uh, with that big Battle Royal at the end of the night. Next qualifier matchup has Ron Simmons and Chris Jericho, a interesting tag team, uh, defeating Rocky Maivia and Yoshihiro Tajiri in 739 when Jericho submitted Yoshihiro Tajiri with a line tamer after blatantly cheating. He grabbed the television championship and bashed Tajiri upside the head with it when the referee was getting distracted and locked him in the line tamer and blatantly cheated. 70 rating for the match, uh... 78 from Jericho, 69 from Simmons, and so forth. Um, so that means that Jericho and Simmons moves on to the Battle Royal. Except not quite, because Roddy Piper comes out and is not happy about what just happened. He's talking to the referee and the ring announcer as Chris Jericho is celebrating the victory. The ring announcer then announces that due to the tainted ending of the match, the referee's decision has been reversed in a huge, in a bit of a surprising moment. Uh Jericho is absolutely livid and starts yelling at Piper as Rocky Maivia and Yoshihiro Tajiri start celebrating this shocking upset. So Rocky Maivia and Yoshihiro Tajiri are in the main event battle royal now. They got Things got reversed and Jericho and Simmons are out. Before Jericho can yell for too long though, Dean Malenko comes running out from the back to get his championship back. But Jericho sees him coming and escapes through the crowd, being able to get away from Malenko coming after him. Jericho leaves the TV title behind though and in the chaos... Uh, leaves the TV title behind, in the, though, in the chaos. And Malenko gets his championship back. So the championship is now back in the hands of Dean Malenko after Jericho stole it a few weeks ago on Nitro. 64 rating for the segment. So, uh, all right. <laughs> I want to slightly explain this here because I didn't like the idea of having you do the reversal of the finish. Uh, but my idea and Tajiri originally got picked by the randomizer to win this matchup and no matter what i tried to do i i kept him strong i protected him i tried to make it uh, uh i even tried to make it a draw jericho refused to put my v into jerry over so i was like fine we will do this cheap reversal thing then but it also kind of makes sense because piper's you know it, it's it's been the whole conspiracy that jericho everybody's been out to get jericho and and Roddy Piper's been at the forefront of it. Piper's out to get Jericho and all that. So it kind of makes sense storyline-wise. You know, it, it makes sense that, that Piper uh, co is costing Jericho the opportunity. Um, now, obviously, where does this leave Ron Simmons? Well, spoiler alert, you'll see here in a little bit. We then move on to a matchup that uh, is kind of featured on the show. I, I wanted to get the the women's division featured on the show Um Honestly, I wanted to do another matchup that wasn't the world title match or the World War Three thing, and I thought it'd be kind of it'd be kind of a good, cool thing to uh, get the the females feature on the show. So we've got a big eight woman tag team matchup happening. About that terrible wrestling run because it's a crowd heat, kind of expected. Uh, Cutie Suzuki, Jacqueline, Medusa, and Megumi Kudo defeat Bull Nakano, Etsuku, Etsuku Omida. Mariko Yoshida and Takahiro Inoue in 6.47 when Kudo pinned Inoue with a Kudo driver. So Megumi Kudo getting a big victory here uh, on pay-per-view. Uh, she had the second best performance of the match too, only behind Bull Nakano, who surprisingly enough took the loss here. Well, she didn't actually get pinned though, but she did get a loss here. Um, she was doing this, she's still kind of doing this whole thing where she refuses to fight anybody. 
unless it's on a big show. Uh, and so that's why she agreed to this because she this match was going to happen on Saturday night and she refused to be a part of it because uh, it was on Saturday night. It wasn't on pay-per-view. That's kind of the story she had going on. Or at least Sonny Ono refused for her. So uh, the match got put on here, but obviously she didn't actually take the loss. So technically she's still, uh, you know, yet to be defeated. But big, uh, big victory for Suzuki, Jacqueline, Medusa, and Kudo. And 54 rating's not terrible, honestly. It's really not that bad. Um, and the cra crazy thing, too, about this is that I'm pretty sure all eight of these women were, are all unimportant status, and yet we didn't have any issue with the crowd when it came to, like, oh, they're all important, we don't like them, whatever. So, you know, maybe uh, maybe they're okay with the females working. Uh, may have to start featuring them in at least short-ish matches on Nitro, because... Right now they have like no popularity still, even even while having matches on Saturday night, like at least once a week on Saturday night, um, or basically every week on Saturday night, they have at least one match, and it really has not been gaining them a whole lot of popularity. Um, but we'll have to see what happens. After that, we have another qualifier matchup. That sounds about right. <laughs> we have another qualifier matchup, and in a very surprising uh, lottery thing, I'm not going to lie, uh, this threw me for a big loop because I was a hundred percent not expecting that to happen. I did not book this. Like I said, the randomizer chose this and I thought it was hilarious that they put Vader and Sting together on a tag team. It made so much sense story-wise because I was like, Vader and Bam Bam Bigelow just attacked Sting this past Monday night on Nitro and here we are, or not, was it the past Monday? It was on Nitro and yet here they are having to team together. Nevertheless, Vader and Sting get the victory over Ricky Morton and one of the members of the Four Horsewomen or Four Horsemen, Marcus Bagwell, in a 21. When Sting gets Bagwell to submit to the Scorpion Deathlock, uh, so just like that, the prophecy told by Ric Flair um, about the Four Horsemen all being in there to try to help Brian Pillman win. Well, one of their members was already gone from the. He's not going to be in the Battle Royal, so that's already going to cause some issues there, but. Nevertheless, Vader and Sting being forced to team together here tonight, and uh, they get the victory. A uh, 56 rating for the match. Pro you know, probably a good part of it is because Vader and Sting have zero chemistry, and so they're, uh, they only had 64 in-ring performances each. But, you know, we'll take it. We'll take it. Um, but, uh, yeah. So Ricky Morton, Marcus Bagwell, not qualifying as vader and sting do qualify so that's those are two huge ones i mean vader just recently had a shot at the world title and of course sting was the former wcw world's heavyweight champion so you know that could be uh that could be some big big names in that battle royal here at the end of the night we move on to another qualifier matchup in which shane helms and terry richards defeat dean Mal uh, defeat billy kim in and the current television champion dean malenko in 726 when terry richards pins billy kim in with a gore, or a spear, I guess. They're not really calling it a gore at this point. Uh, it's a big spear. Jericho came in and attacked Dean Malenko during the matchup that cost his team the victory. 67 rating for the match. 80 from Dean Malenko, who really helped carry this matchup for sure. Uh, so there you go. There's that. Uh, Jericho came in and attacked Malenko. Of course, when Malenko wasn't able to come 100% squared up to him kind of thing. You know, Jericho doing the cowards thing. But, uh, yeah, Malenko and Kidman not in the Battle Royal as Shane Helms and Terry Richards, two of our younger talent here in WCW, move on to that Battle Royal. And so far, we've had quite a bit of younger talent end up in that Battle Royal at the end of the night. Um, I mean, we got, you know, Sting and Vader and Steve Austin, but a lot of the other ones are just are a lot of our younger talent who uh, who's looking for that opportunity, who's kind of, you know, slowly, slowly could begin built up as, like, future, future stars here in WCW. So it's going to be kind of interesting to see how well they perform in that in that battle royal when the stage, you know, when the, the bright lights are on them. After that, another qualifier matchup in which Brian Pillman and speaking of young talent looking for that opportunity, Brian Pillman and Sexton Hardcastle uh, defeat Johnny B. Bad and Diamond Dallas Page in 737 when Hardcastle pinned Johnny B. Bad with a missile drop kick. That's right. Uh, Hardcastle was the one who got the victory in this matchup. That's a very shocking performance there. Um, Page with an 82, which is strong. Pillman with a 93, which is strong. 65 rating for the match, though, which is kind of a little off. I think it's because I had to I had to actually 
protect or I had to keep Johnny B. Bad strong because he didn't like the idea of taking the loss. Um, so that might have hurt it a little bit, but you know, I'll take it. I'll still take a 65. But uh, yeah, Johnny B. Bad and Diamond Dallas Page, who of course have history with each other, they had that big war near the start of the series for the WCW Television Championship. They uh, kind of have to for they were kind of forced to take sides or to team up here tonight. Um, of course, they had that awkward interaction a few months back when after Page turned on the Horsemen, they had an awkward interaction with each other. But uh, yeah, they had to team up tonight and couldn't get it done against Brian Pillman and Sexton Hardcastle. So. Pillman and Hardcastle move on to the main event battle royal. Uh, and just so we're clear, by the way, I'm going to kill. I'm going to keep him as Sexton Hardcastle for a while. I, I definitely don't plan on naming him Edge. Um, I'll probably come up with some other name in the future, but uh, I just like the idea of him being called Sexton Hardcastle. Like once I once I maybe get to the point where I can start pushing him, that maybe I'll change his name to something else. But I just like the idea of calling him Sex and Hardcastle. I think it's a great name to be using here in WCW. So there's that. Uh, you know, and of course he's across the ring from somebody who's named Johnny B. Bad. So, I mean, it's not like Sex and Hardcastle is really that bad of a name. <laughs> Nevertheless, 65 rating. And uh, Pillman and Hardcastle move on to the Battle Royal. We then go backstage where Roddy Piper is backstage in his office and Ron Simmons walks in. Uh, Simmons expresses disappointment about the reversal of the tag match earlier in the night. And Piper says it, it was an unfortunate side effect. He didn't mean for Simmons to have to suffer because of that. Uh, but it wouldn't really be fair to, for him to just get put in that battle royal tonight. So he says that uh, to try to make up for it, he says that he's going to grant Ron Simmons a title match tomorrow night on Nitro. It won't be for the world title, but he will grant Simmons a title match tomorrow night on Nitro as he's going to grant Simmons a shot at the WCW Television cha Television Championship, and it will be Simmons versus Dean Malenko tomorrow night on Nitro. That should be a big matchup for sure. Um, we'll have to see how well that pr happens, as Simmons actually seems appreciative of that. He seems like, you know, he's he seems okay with being given a, a title opportunity. So there is that. 87 rating for the segment, and we'll have to see where things go from there. We then move on to another qualifier matchup, which featured Meng and Ric Flair defeating Stevie Ray and Rick Martel when Meng pins Stevie Ray in 807. 77 rating for the matchup. Flair obviously carrying the match. Uh, kind of obvious, really. But uh, yeah, Meng and Ric Flair moving on to the Battle Royal. Of course, Meng, that's a big name. That's a big guy to have in that Battle Royal. Um, you know, big beast monster kind of character like that is always a scary thing to have in a battle royal rick flair you know brian pillman did it match before over and now rick flair is in it so two of the three horsemen are in there uh still yet to see whether chris benoit qualify or not and whether he gets in or not but at least flair and pillman are in the battle royal uh but you know booger t won't have stevie there stevie ray in the battle royal with him but we'll have to see how well that plays out and i go from there 77 ring for that for that match really good stuff there we move on to a, another qualifier, and uh, this one doesn't get as good of a rating as I was hoping because of one of the teams, but that's all right. Uh, in a decent matchup, Chris Benoit and Tom Brandy defeat Steven Regal and Sean Waltman in 805 when Brandy actually, all right, he doesn't submit Regal. <laughs> he, he pins him. He doesn't make him submit. That would be the craziest moment thing ever to have Tom Brandy getting a submission victory over Steven Regal. Uh, he pins him, not submits him. <laughs> but anyway, Tom Brady with a surprise victory over Steven Regal. Um, and that means that Chris Benoit, the third, will be the third of four horsemen in the Battle Royal tonight. So, got to favor the odds of the horsemen in that Battle Royal. They've got Flair, Benoit, and Pillman all in that. Got to favor those odds. Tom Brady's in there as well. And uh, so far, no members of the New World Order qualifying for it. Um, it does get revealed by the commentators that Bret Hart is one of the people who chose, who is not in the lottery tonight because of course he already has a shot at the WCW World Heavyweight Championship at Starcade. So why would he need to be, you know, why would he need to earn a shot through World War III? Uh, so two of the three members that have entered this are, uh, you know, not in it. Uh, we don't know if Jerry Lynn, the other half of the tag team champions will be in it or not, but 
two out of three have uh, kind of failed. So that's kind of an interesting bit. And also Steven Regal, kind of a kind of a disappointing thing because Steven Regal, of course, you know he's more of a prize fighter now. He's wanting that that title opportunity and couldn't get the job done here in this matchup to move on to that battle royal. Nevertheless, Tom Brady and Chris Benoit get the victory, and we'll be moving on to that battle royal in the main event. Speaking of the New World Order, Bret Hart has a promo talking about tonight's world title matchup, close, saying he's going to watch it closely to see who he's facing at Starcade. Talks about the advantages of facing each man. Uh, talks about how he's fought Randy Savage in the past, so he knows what he has to do to beat Savage. Whereas Eddie Guerrero may be somebody who's, you know, an unknown factor to him, but he's also young and inexperienced and uh, someone like Eddie Guerrero, you know, a high flyer. Like he knows how, Bret Hart knows how to handle a high flyer like Eddie Guerrero. And he talks about how he ends the promo by saying that 1996 will end with the New World Order in complete control. 100 rating for the segment. I believe that leads us on to our main event, or to our, not our main event. Our world title matchup, that is. Uh, all the qualifiers, that should have been all the qualifiers out of the way. We move on to our W shot, our WCW shot, our match, that is, for the WCW World Heavyweight Championship. Okay, I'll take it. I'll take it. In an exceptional matchup, Randy Savage defeats Eddie Guerrero in 1337 by pinfall, making offense number three of the WCW World Heavyweight Championship. 88 rating for it. There was even times when like a psychology was on display. So with if that hadn't happened, they would have had an even higher rating. Uh, I they're at 13 and a half minutes, and I had them called in the ring because both men had higher than an 80 psychology. So I'm not sure why they had a lack of psychology at that point. Maybe it's because they called it versus you know whatever. Um, I guess. You know, well, I guess we'll just have to learn from it. But hey, I'll still take an 88. An 88 will definitely help carry this this card. A strong performance from Eddie Guerrero. But at the end of the day, Randy Savage gets the job done. And so it will be Randy Savage versus Bret Hart for the WCW World Heavyweight Championship at Starcade. And then we move on to the main event of the evening. The Battle Royal to determine who wins. World War Three, 1996. And in an 80-rated Battle Royal, in a decent match with all of the other members in it, including Steve Austin getting the most eliminations over the course of the match, Sting, Chris Benoit, Rocky Maivia, and Brian Pillman being the final four, which is kind of a big deal because that flare was out before the final four. So it came down to Benoit, Pillman, Sting, and Maivia. Sting kind of got some aid from the young rookie Maivia uh, going up against the Horsemen. But uh, Maivia and Benoit ended up eliminating each other. Or ended up not eliminating each other. They ended up got eliminated at the same time. It was one of those, oh, Sting clotheslines Benoit out of the ring while Maivia gets thrown out of the ring at the same time by Pillman. So it came down to Sting and Brian Pillman, and at the end of the day, in 1304, Brian Pillman wins the Battle Royal, defeating, eliminating Sting, and Brian Pillman is the winner of World War III 1996. That means that Brian Pillman, at any point between now and next year's World War III pay-per-view, has a guaranteed shot at the WCW World Heavyweight Championship. Afterwards, the horsemen, the rest of the horsemen come back out to celebrate with him. Tom Terrors talk about the promise by Ric Flair coming true, as Pillman now has a shot at the title in the next 12 months. And World War III comes to an end with the horsemen still celebrating. 72 rating for that. Brian Pillman has that shot now. We end the show with an 84. Increase our popularity in 22 regions. I'll take it. I will take it for sure. Um, not our strongest pay-per-view, but to be fair, you know, we didn't have a lot of stories that were being told out of this. We had the TV title story that was being told, but, and, you know, and then we had Paul Levesque costing Dean, uh, Dustin Rhodes his matchup, but we didn't really have a whole lot of like full-on storylines developing throughout this. So 
you know, it kind of made sense that it wasn't a stronger show. But hey, I'll still take, I'll still take an E4. I mean, that was a a great, uh, a great show for sure. So there you have it. First guaranteed pre-book match for Starcade. It will be Randy Savage defending the WCW World Heavyweight Championship against a Bret Hart from the New World Order. And waiting in the wings could just be Brian Pillman ready to cash in and get a shot at the WCW World Heavyweight Championship. Uh, as we move into December of the game, which is kind of weird because this is going to be getting released on a December uh on a day in December, um, the schedule kind of got thrown off a little bit with this whole thing, but, uh, I didn't want to do stuff. I didn't, didn't want to do world war three last week because it would have felt weird to do it then. So we're going to do it now. Uh, we do have a little bit of news as Lex Luger has left WCW. Um, we obviously we kind of already knew that he lost the I quit match. Like I said, his contract was up and I just didn't feel like renewing it. Uh, he was giving me too many issues recently and I just, yeah, didn't really choose to. Colonel Robert Parker, I wasn't doing anything with him. He was a backstage guy um, who wasn't really doing anything. And then Kendall Wyndham, I brought him in, paired him up with Barry for a little while. He just was not getting any better. His performances were just not getting any better at all. Um, I tried doing what I could to push him on Saturday night, and it just wasn't getting any better. So I was just like, you know what? When his contract's up, I'm just going to let him go. So he has gone from WCW as well. Getting fantastic reviews for World War III in 1996. 11th overall, that's because our pay-per-view providers do not, we don't have like really strong viewers for this compared to Nitro's. Uh, We only had one, a little over 1 million people buying the pay-per-view, but I'll still take that. Um, We do have a broadcasting deal that should be coming up here in the next month or two. And when that comes up, we'll be able to get a better deal, uh, especially since we're a big company. We'll be able to get a better deal and be able to, um, Hopefully get more viewers out there, get more sites out there for us. Uh, if I remember right, I don't remember for sure. Okay, yeah, I did go over the Survivor Series 1996 on screen. Uh, so yeah, that's that's uh, WCW World War Three. We are heading in to Monday Nitro now, and uh, we will be heading into Starcade, the biggest show of the year. We will have to see how everything plays out. Like I said, kind of the good news about World War Three not really having a lot of matches that had stories be- behind it meant that uh, it gives us a little bit longer time to build stories up. For a potential big time show happening at the end of the year. <laughs> Nevertheless, thank you all for watching. I definitely appreciate each and every one of you who watches any of my content, uh, especially with all the very content I have on the channel recently. And until tomorrow night for Monday Nitro, I bid you all adieu.